good day, my ever attentive student at home. My name is Adegbito Lua Yomi Dayo. Today's Literature in English lesson is going to be on African poetry. The title of the poem we are going to be discussing is The Leader and the Lead by Niji Oshundare. The lesson objectives are, in the course of the lesson, the students will be able to, number one, align the plus summary of the poem, Number two, identify and discuss the themes, that is the messages of the poem. Number three, analyze the poetic devices of the poem. Now, I'll start with the introduction. Niji Oshundari was born in 1947. He is an essayist, writer for the theater, lecturer, and one of Nigeria's, Nigeria's most celebrated poets. His poetry combines concepts and traditions of the Yoruba culture with Mazisté approaches. He uses mythological concepts to underline his struggle against social injustice and in humanity. The leader and the lead is a fable. A fable is a type of a story using animal characters, which lacks good leadership due to rivalry and imperfection. Most powerful animals in the kingdom saw the reason and right to become the ruler, yet their power seems to be their flaws, that is, the reasons for them not to be voted for. The trouble prolonged until the forest sage, in line 18 stanza 9, provided a solution. According to the forest sage, strength alone is not the yastic for becoming a ruler. The balance of strength and weakness is the needed quality for any animal that will rule the pack well. This is revealed in lines 17 to 20. Now we go to the summary of the poem. The poem opens up with the antelopes who are not in support of the lion to be their leader of the jungle because of his attacks with his paws. At the same time, the impalas are afraid of the hyenas' letter appetite to devour them. The old animal kingdom are aware of the fact that giraffe's eyes is too far from the ground, hence it does not deserve the crown. It is an obvious fact that the strife of the elephant is too deadly, so he is not qualified for the crown. The kingdom doesn't want an ugly king, which is why Watog is not an option, and they do not want a controversial king, which is why Reno is not an option as well. In essence, the pack is without a leader, that is a king, until the forest sage profiles a solution, which is that the throne should go to any animal with a hybrid of habits. An animal with little quality of a lion, a little quality of a lamb. Such animal must be tough, compassionate, transparent, and uh, mysterious. The pack will remain peaceful once there is a leader who knows how to be a follower and followers who are mindful of their leadership uh, rights. Now, we go to the structure of the poem. The poem is a fable. A fable is a style in literature where animals are the characters are mostly grafted for the purpose of teaching a moral lesson. For example, Animal Farm by George Orwell. The poem is a 12, stanz is a 12 stanzas couplet and rhymes and rhythms. The first part of the poem just opposed varying animals choice to lead and those of followers against their leadership. The last four stanza profiles solution to the overing choice of leadership a problem in the poem. Now, the tone and the mood. The tone and the mood of the poem can be described as unrest, rivalry, and disagreement. It expresses a confused state of uh, affairs in the animal kingdom. I will stop here while we go for a short break. Thank you. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. 
You are welcome back to the second segment of today's lesson. Now we will be discussing the themes, that is the messages in the poem. There are many messages that one can draw out from the poem, and they are number one, the theme of a leadership, number two, the theme of nature, number three, the theme of imperfection, number four, the theme of balance. Now, to start with, the theme of leadership. The title of the poem speaks for itself. Even the content of the poem is all about choosing a leader. The title of the poem, The Leader and the Lead, portrays issues between two subjects, that is leading and uh, following. The bone of contention in the poem is about who wants to lead and who doesn't want to be a follower of a certain leader. That is about the theme of leadership. Now the next theme, the theme of uh, nature. This is revealed in the characters and the setting. That is the setting which is a park forest in the poem. Through this, Oshundari is able to capture the consciousness of the readers by sending feelings of freshness and uh, greenness of nature. For instance, and I quote, transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake, end of quotation. Hence, the descriptive manner in which Oshundari describes each of the animal reflects the beauty of nature, which is portrayed in the future of the animals. For instance, and I quote, the ferocious pants of his paws, end of quotation. Then another quotation, the elephant trudges into the power torso, but its colleagues dread his trampling feet, end of quotation, and so many other instances. Now the third team, which is the team of imperfection, Oshundari is able to achieve the imperfections through the animal, animals, uh, characters that were supposed to be chosen as uh, leaders. There is also an obvious fact that perfection is not the recipe for leadership. The animals that assume that they can fix into the leadership post are not worth it because of one weakness or the other. For instance, in line 13, and I quote, the warthog is too ugly, the reno too riotous, end of quotation. The above confirms the imperfections in the animals. Now the last theme, which is theme number four, theme of a balance. The theory of checks and balances later settles the quest for leadership. This is achieved by the forest sage because it takes wisdom, wisdom to arrive at any solution to a problem. In essence, Oshundari is able to reveal the fact that leadership traits requires half strength and half weakness. This is shown in lines 17 to 20, and I quote, Our need calls for a hybrid of habits, proclaims the forest a sage. A little bit of a lion a little bit of a lamp, tough like a tiger, compassionate like a doe, transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. End of quotation. I will pause here while we go for a short break. Thank you. Don't go away. You are welcome back to the last segment of today's lesson as we go on with the poetic uh, devices. This has to do with diction and figurative uh, devices employed by Oshundari in bringing out the message of the poem. Examples are simile, metaphor, antithesis, symbolism, imagery, alliteration, repetition, and so on. Now, number one, diction. This is also known as a choice of words. The type of language used by Oshundari is simple and straightforward. The poem is narrated through a third-person point of a view. That is, the language is a simple English. Then number two, 
simile. This is direct comparison between two things of similar features. Examples are, and I quote, like a snake without a head, end of quotation. The pack is being likened to a snake without a head, which implies that the pack is without a leader. Other examples of simile are, and I quote, tough like a tiger, compassionate like a doe. Another example, I quote, transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. Here, the forest sage is suggesting checks and balances to the type of leadership needed. The third poetic device, metaphor. This is an indirect comparison in a work of art. In the poem, The Leader and the Lead, there is an indirect comparison between animal kingdom and human society. The situation of choosing a leader in animal kingdom is indirectly connected to happen in a human democratic setting whenever it comes to the issue of electing a new leader. Then the fourth poetic device, repetition. This is a situation whereby certain words are or expressions are repeated for emphasis or to create a sing-song rhythm. Examples are the peak. The peak, the word peak is repeated in line 20, line 10, and 15. Another repeated word is ed, which is repeated in line 9 and line 24. Also, there is repetition of phrase such as a little bit of a, which is in stanza 10. Another poetic device is imagery. This is effectively used to create mental picture in the poem. For example, line 6, But the impala shudder at his letter appetite. End of quotation. Then line 16, And the park stretches around. End of quotation. Then the, another example, line 10, The park points to the publicity of his uh, stripes. So this imaginative description one tends to imagine the picture of the particular animal that the poet is describing then symbolism this is when a word or expression is used to represent a status event or idea the term for a sage symbolizes a wise person which is invariably in a human uh, society that is a democratic setting. So in essence, it represents the sage in the poem represents the poet. Another poetic device, alliteration. This is repetition of initial consonant sounds in between lines of the poem. We have in line four, pounds of his paws. Another example, line eight, far from the ground. Then, Another example in line 17, hybrid of a habits. Then the last poetic device, antithesis. This is creating an opposing or contrasting opinion or character. This virtually dominates the poem, the poem lines. Each of the couplet shares opposing characters. Example in stanza 3, Ayana says the crown is made for him, but Impala shudders at his letter appetites. Another example is stanza 6. The elephant trudges into the power torso, but its colleague dread is trampling feet. End of quotation. Now, in rounding up today's lesson, let us briefly summarize what we have been able to achieve today. Number one, we discuss a brief introduction of the poem. Number two, we discuss the structure of the poem. Number four, Four, we discussed briefly the tone and the mood of the poem. Then we highlighted the themes, that is the messages in the poem. And finally, we highlighted the poetic devices. So for further study of the poem, you can Google HTTP, HTTPS colon double slash www.lyricline.org greater than poems. Or you go to https colon double slash keys keyswriters dot com greater than yek new
poems. Thank you. See you some other time.